I want to talk a little bit more about relationships today. For some reason, I've had a lot of a lot on my mind with uh, relationships and uh, friendships and finding ways to endear yourself to people or earn trust, give trust, things like that. I I had the opportunity today to help a friend out who's building a home, and he needed some assistance running some wiring, some low voltage wiring like his cable and internet lines and whatnot. And when I got to the house to help him out, it's Saturday, so you know, giving up a little bit of my my Saturday afternoon. But it's a good friend. I like hanging out with him. So it was it was more like hanging out with a friend than than going to work. So I didn't really mind. And you know, good friend. Want to want to hook him up, help him out. So when I got there, we he and I went to work. And after a while, I found out that there should have been four people. Well, he had invited four people not counting me, and all four people said they were going to be there, and I was the only one that showed up. So right there, i, I got to be honest, there's a little bit, there was a little part of me that was kind of like egotistically like, hey, all right, <laughs> you know, I'm the one guy that shows up. Uh, I've kind of proved my friendship or my loyalty to you, and, you know, that's that's something that goes a long way. There's a term in, in the military, and maybe if you're not in the military, maybe you've heard this term before, it's called the good old boys club. A lot of the time, the good old boys club gets a bad rap. Like people say, well, it's, you know, it's like being in a clique or a club or, um, you know, they're going to hook this guy up because they're buddies or they go out drinking or, or whatever it is. And so a lot of times they say, well, hey, you know, this isn't going to be a good old boys club. This is, you know, it's open to everybody or whatever. Um, but I've actually talked to someone a while ago who said, hey, why do you think they call it a good old boys club and how do people get membership you know, so to speak, into that club. People that are in these clubs together, these groups, are typically people who rely on one another, they've counted on one another, and they trust one another's capabilities. If you are the sort of person who's in a leadership position or in some sort of authority position where you want to surround yourself with people to to compensate maybe for your strengths or to be good at specific areas, what kind of people are you going to want to have in your personal club? They're going to be reliable people. They're going to be good people. They're going to be hardworking, integrity, all these things. By doing these things and being this sort of person, the one that shows up when no one else does, the one that works until the job is done, the one that doesn't complain, the one that's always reliable, that's how you become a member of the Good, the good Old Boys Club. So don't think of it as a bad thing. In fact, think about your own life. Think right now. Who is it in your life that if you had to step back and say, who's in my Good Old Boys Club? Who's, who's my closest confidence? Whatever you want to call it, your little team, your, your, your crew, whatever it is, think about who's in your club. A lot of times you see things on the, inter you see things on the internet that says, well, if you're going to make a zombie survival team based on your friends, who would it be and what roles would they play? And that's an interesting thought experiment because you go, okay, well, what I bring people with who are just, hey, you know what? John is really funny and he's always the life of the party. He goes out and he gets drunk and we laugh at him and all that sort of stuff but he doesn't contribute anything to our well-beings. In fact, usually he's a mooch and we have to drive him home and we sometimes he embarrasses us and we end up having to buy his drinks at the end of the night or whatever it is, right? Um, what sort of people would you surround yourself if it really came down to it? In the military, the people you surround yourself sometimes become the ones whose very existence determines whether or not you live or die. And as a leader, when you get to delegate to people... Whether, again, whether you're the regional manager for Target or you're the shift manager at Toys R Us, whatever it is, if you're in an opportunity or, or you're in a position where you can delegate authority to other people, what qualities do you look for in people like that? And knowing that, knowing that, hey, now if I'm in those positions where i got to delegate that out, if I'm the person being delegated to, what qualities do I have that I want to show to those uh, you know, who are over me or maybe... Uh, if this is in a job or a position where you're trying to prove yourself, how are you going to show what you're good at? How are you going to show that you can be trusted, that you can be a member of that good old boys club? Um, this goes to another di issue that I want to talk about more in the future, but there is a, a marriage and relationship book I read a few years ago uh, during my, my deployment to Iraq. In fact, I gave a lot of other soldiers this book. And it was called His Needs, Her Needs, Building an Affair-Proof Marriage. I'm forgetting the author at the moment, but I'll, I'll try and link it here or put it in the comments. Um, but the, the book revolves around what keeps people together and why people go back to old flames or whatever it is. 
and, and the general principle is a relationship balance. So look at, in my last couple of videos, I've talked about finances and investing in things, cars, monies, relationship, whatever it is. If you meet a person for the first time, imagine that person is, a, is like you're opening a brand new bank account with every person you meet in your life. And that bank account starts at zero. The moment you meet them or introduce to them, the way they talk to you, the way they conduct themselves, the way they treat the people around them, the jokes they tell, the way they dress, all these sort of things for you add or subtract a currency in that account. So let's say the first thing they do when you see them is they reach out to give you a handshake and you're, a, you're in the military and you have a strong handshake and they give you a, a dead fish handshake. Immediately that person goes in the negatives for you. If that's what's something that's like profound or interesting or, or you know that matters to you, immediately that person's in the negatives. So everything they do from then on out either pushes them further in the hole or digs themselves out of it. And with you, depending on the sort of person and personality of someone you meet, you can offend them right off the bat or just put them off for whatever reason. Maybe it's nothing you're doing wrong necessarily, but it's just their perception of things. So something to consider if you want to be a member of these clubs, these good old boy clubs, these these relationships with people where you are reliable. And like, for example, going back to the way I started the story with my friend, I can pretty much guarantee that when I need to call on him and when I need a favor, he'll be there. And if I invite five people and four of them don't show up, I guarantee you he won't be one of those four people that doesn't show up. If you want relationships with, like this, if you want friends like this, start being the sort of person that shows up. Look for opportunities to serve and to work with these people. Find a way to make sure that your balance in your friends and your, your bosses, whatever it is, make sure that balance in their accounts is in the positives, and the higher it is, the better you're off. Thanks. Good luck.